Ariana DeBose is a certified triple threat of both stage and screen, known for appearing in Broadway musicals like Bring It On, Hamilton, A Bronx Tale, and her Tony-nominated turn in Summer, the Donna Summer musical. Next year, she'll be seen as Anita in the big screen remake of West Side Story. But right now, at home audiences, you can see her in Ryan Murphy's star-studded film adaptation of The Prom. Hear about how she relates to her picture-perfect character of Alyssa Green, developing a relationship with on-screen mom Carrie Washington, and more on this week's Show People. Ariana, it's so good to see you. How are you doing? You know, the last time I saw you, I think, in person was opening night Tina. Everything's changed since then, hasn't it? That's right. Gosh, that feels like forever ago and a completely different world ago. Wow. It's so good to see you, Paul. <laughs> um, I'm doing well. I, I count my blessings, you know, like we were able to finish the prom to like give this film to all of you and I count my blessings to to be a fortunate working actor in this moment when so many of us have not been able to work. Um, so I'm I have absolutely nothing to complain about, and I'm just happy to see your face. I'm one of the first Prom Super fans because I fell in love with it down in Atlanta when I first saw it down there. The movie's fantastic. How does it feel to actually? I know it's been a dream of yours to be in a movie musical, and you will be in more than one movie musical, but how does it feel to actually see it and to to get to experience it? And I know you're a fan of The Prom as well. Oh, I loved the Broadway production of The Prom. I went to the theater three times and I stood in standing room for two of them. That's how much I loved The Prom. Um, I love this film so much because I think it's it pays tribute to the stage production. It, 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 but it also is, it's, 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 it's kind of a beautiful tribute to who we are as a theatrical community, you know? Um, mm. I think the tone of it captures our spirit um, and also allows so many of those important conversations to be had. Um, and I, I feel as though I gravitate towards work that has something to say, right? Like I went after Donna Summer because I wanted to play a strong, beautiful brown, vocal goddess icon um, who got to yeah. stand on Hero and, and tell the world that, yes, she was successful, but the journey to that success was not easy. Um, being a part of the original company of Hamilton, the, there are endless, endless contributions to, to the conversation in our society that are given to us um, by Hamilton. And I, I feel that this project does the exact same thing. It, uh, but that's the, the mark of good art, right? It allows us to have these hard conversations and to get us thinking outside of the box. Um, but in a nutshell, it's a dream come true. You know, I was like, I pinch myself realizing that I get to, or I got to work with Meryl Streep and I got to work with Kerry Washington and now KW and I text. Like, what is life? It's the coolest thing. I'm so excited for you. I mean, your your career has just been incredible to watch. It's very exciting to see someone sort of burst onto the Broadway scene. And, and it's exciting to see someone pay their dues and get opportunity after opportunity. And and so, you know, I'm very, I'm very excited to watch this happen to you. So uh, I just wanted to say that. And I can't wait to see what more happens to you. But let's talk about Alyssa Green. Now, first of all, I have to say, I was nervous about things getting cut, things, mm -hmm. you know, as a as a Broadway fan, there, I was nervous about the score sort of being uh, changed a lot, and it really wasn't. Um, it's very mm -hmm. faithful to, to the, the way the story is told on Broadway, but with a lot added, a lot mm -hmm. of beautiful scenes and a lot of beautiful background to the characters. Mm -hmm. um, I was nervous that your song, Alyssa Green, wouldn't be in it because I love that song. No, it's like such too. a great like, character oh song. It's such a great song. Uh, so Alyssa is, um, she's kind of the perfect girl, right? <laughs> and mom demands her to be the perfect girl. Um, I guess I guess because dad's not around, right? You, you mm -hmm. kind of know that. And you get to see a little bit of Alyssa's mm -hmm. backstory, right? Because you, you got to sort of act out some great moments in Alyssa's life, which must have been yeah. fun. 
do you relate to Alyssa? Let's talk about this. Uh, and obviously she's, she's struggling with um, this relationship uh, with this girl and, and you have identified as queer, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. I love you did that. Uh, you did that a few years ago. You sort of came out and said, this is who I am. Um, and I know your mom's a part of your life. And I just mm -hmm. want to sort of, this feels like on paper, something you can relate to. So talk about that a little bit. I 100% relate to Alyssa. Um, there are elements of her story that are very, um, very personal to me. I, um, it's, I remember very viscerally as a young person trying to meet the expectations of so many other people. I think young people today have so many pressures. Um, yeah. You know, you're you're working hard to get good grades. There's the social aspect of it all. Social media is a thing. There's and there's the urge to want to be accepted, to be liked, um, and to be popular, right? You know, I mean, social media to me is just one big popularity contest in reality. Um, and who doesn't want who doesn't want to be, or at least feel like they're accepted and loved? But I think that. For me, I'm very clear on what it feels like to know that you have a full plate and that it is um, expected that you will be excellent at what you do. Anything that you do, you 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 go for it full out, you know, as Jerry Mitchell says, full out, honey. Mm -hmm. That, you know, success is the thing. It's what feeds a lot of our... our, our it, our young people, the, the the journey to success. And it is hard, it is not easy. Um, and when you see Alyssa throughout this film, ultimately she's trying to meet her mother's expectations. You know, and I'm so lucky. My mom is one of the most wonderful humans in the history of the world. Um, she's also a school teacher. And so she does expect excellence, you know. She does not like it when you, sure do something halfway that's not her style so i i do identify with having felt like i needed to meet her expectations in addition to my own expectations we have ex expectations of ourselves um and i think the finding balance within those expectations around what is reasonable is a lesson i didn't learn until my adulthood um so it feels crazy when you're a teenager uh, but I loved that I had the opportunity to explore Alyssa um, in tandem with working with Carrie because she made it feel so safe for us to have this conversation about what a mother-daughter relationship looks like between two women of color. Um, and you see Mrs. Green, who ultimately is a bigot and, un and she's homophobic as well. Um, and that's a topic that is, ho is rarely talked about. Um, in this setting between two women of color. So it was incredibly challenging um, and also a very cathartic and beautiful experience. Um, I'm really proud of what we made. And I think Alyssa is going to hopefully uh, reach through the lens and, and give a lot of other young girls hope. You know, I love that this story has a happy ending, Paul. Like it has a happy ending. It's all about the possibility that you can stand in your truth and you be your most authentic self and you can wear your crown there's nothing wrong with who you are you are perfectly made and um i love that i got to find a way with Alyssa to kind of bring that story and that truth to her mother she meets her mother halfway right Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a brave thing that young people have the opportunity to do when, when we want to have these hard conversations. Uh, uh, essentially, that's what we are doing. We are meeting our parents halfway um, by coming to them and meeting them where they are at. So change is not overnight. It does take time, but it's possible and joyful and full of sparkle in the prime. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I have to say your final uh, moments with KW. I'm gonna call her KW. Too. KW. Um, <laughs> that's, that, that's when that's when the tears turned on. That, that, that's a beautiful scene. You have a beautiful scene with KW, and uh, she's wearing a beautiful dress too. Um, Isn't she but, goofy, uh, honey? Yeah. <laughs> what was it like? And and you're fantastic in this scene. What was it like? So, um, Filming, well, that had to be a highlight. I want to hear sort of about some of the highlights on set, but that had to be one of them, getting to do a moment like that. It, that moment was was one of the highlights. There were so many highlights. Are you kidding? Um, but playing that scene with Carrie, she is an angel human. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to work and work with her and, and befriend her. She's become a great friend and a mentor in many, many ways. Um, but just to be seen, I felt, you know, she was, that was the gift she gave me. She saw me, Ariana, in the moment that I was in, um, being not the new girl, but I'm new to this facet of storytelling. She made me feel comfortable and yeah. just gave me the space to be successful in what we were trying to accomplish. Um, just both crying all the time, but we also laughed a lot. Like, that's what was really cool about this cast is that we love to laugh together. Um, Key and Michael Key is the consummate showman and charmster. Um, she liked to share YouTube videos with everyone, which gave me the permission to share <laughs> YouTube videos. So uh, those were the fun moments. I did get Miranda Priestley once. Um, Miss Merrill, it's actually my first day on set and I was so nervous, but thank God I didn't have any lines really. I was just very expensive background for the day. Um, but she was shooting, it's not about me. God, I can't believe I'm telling you this, Paul. Um, <laughs> you know, when Merrill, when, it, when Merrill doesn't take, like you clap for Miss Merrill because she's Merrill and she's brilliant. Every time it's different, it just gets better and better. I learned so much from watching her. But the one time, the one time I didn't clap because I had something on my skirt, right? And I'm looking down, and I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> I look up and there she is right here. And she said, you are not clapping. Was it not good? <laughs> and I just immediately started sweating. I said, I, no, I, I, and I sat on the floor and I bowed. I just bowed because I literally was looking at Miranda Priestley, Meryl Streep. I mean, oh my gosh, it was the craziest moment. And I, I don't know, it was perfect. It was lovely. She was great. We laughed about it afterwards and um, had a really lovely conversation. She's she's everything you think she is. Put it that way. She's a fabulous human. Thank you for sharing that. You talk about uh, being sort of the the newcomer, but you were actually you you know you came from West Side Story, filmed West Side Story before this, um, and you. you have many uh, Broadway credits uh, and a Tony nomination, and you did not one but two Broadway.com blogs. So you're, I did. You're the, that's a, you're in a special club. You're in a special club. We don't <laughs> usually ask people to come back, um, but. But I want to ask you about Jo Ellen because she's actually new. I mean, you're you're like seasoned. You're season ten, <laughs> well, uh, and, 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 and Ryan Murphy um, <laughs> says that <laughs> Ryan Murphy says that uh, your chemistry really kind of sealed it when you, uh, I guess, first read together or whatever you had to do together, a screen test. I don't know what it was, but um, what was it like finding that with her and sort of watching her navigate uh, the experience of filming this? Joe Ellen Pellman, ladies and gentlemen is a star. She is a star on screen and off screen. And I could not have asked for a better partner in bringing these two girls to life. I just, she's so smart. She's so considerate, caring, vulnerable. She's funny. Like I, I cannot say enough about how genius I think this girl is. Um, and we were, we were a great partnership, you know? We're, we're still really good friends. In fact, I'm gonna FaceTime her right after this. You know, being able to make the prom with someone like Jill Ellen, it's just, that was such a gift, you know, to to be able to share these experiences with her and to be also talk about, you know, who we are in our real lives and the fact that neither one of us had a relationship like this 
portrayed on screen when we were growing up. And, you know, we talk right. frequently about like, I wonder what, what would have happened, what the shift would have been. And, and when I think about it, I'm just like, you know, it might've been slight, but it would have been valuable. Um, but at any rate, Joellen is just, she's sunshine. You can't not love her. I mean, look at her face. Like, go watch the prom. Look at her <laughs> face. Look at those eyes. It's impossible not to fall in love with her. Uh, I, can't, I just don't have enough positive, positive adjectives. But what I will say, she is the consummate professional. And she walked onto that set having to do scenes with Meryl Streep, Nicole Kidman, James Corden, Keegan-Michael Key from day one and nailed it. There was never any doubt in anybody's mind. And to see the way the cast just loved her, they took her in and let her fly. It was cool. And the other thing I'm gonna say, Ryan Murphy is a treasure. He's a treasure. He really is. I was really proud of him for taking, um, taking the time to find these girls, right? I'm very honored that he asked me to play Alyssa Green. Um, because here's the thing, and I'm gonna say it, like this is, it's hard to to, st to tell stories and when you're young and it, and it bring a lot of visibility. You know what I mean? It's like you're taking on so much responsibility of when you're telling a story like this because it's so rare to see young women portrayed as queer in this way and also be given a happy ending. So the reality that 200 million people could watch this on Netflix, it's a lot. Um, and I, I take that responsibility so seriously to be a good role model of sorts. Um, and, and just to continue the wave of possibility, the wave of positivity, um, and the the messages of acceptance, to, acceptance over tolerance, um, and unconditional love, and that love is love. Um, I I believe that carrying those messages on within my platform is like the greatest greatest gift and the greatest honor. And also to carry on the work that was started in our Broadway community, that's not something I take lightly because we would not be talking if Casey McGlaw and and his creative team hadn't come together to make a great piece of work and if that cast hadn't poured their hearts and souls into telling this story. Um, and I think, I think kudos to Netflix for green lighting this story immediately um, and not letting not letting the fact that it is centered around two queer girls be a deterrent. It's actually what enhances it and makes it important, gives it value and weight. That was a very long answer, but a very important one. I liked it. I like that you shouted out the broadcast. The speed that this project came together is, mm -hmm. is, is makes it very unusual that literally this movie was coming together while the Broadway show was still was still winning. Um, and we and you know, as a real you're you're a real mm -hmm. Broadway girl and you have done you know, endless workshops of things and readings of things. So you you know what those actors put into these characters. So that, that that's uh, that's that's greatly appreciated. Of course. Look, Izzy McCallum, genius, yeah. genius, beautiful performance as Alyssa Green. I was so inspired by her. Um, Caitlin Kinnanen, beautiful performance as Emma. It is an honor to be a part of the prom family. The fact that we are all now prom family and that we all get to represent, it's its really special, especially in a time when, you know, broad, the Broadway lights are dark. So this is, our, I, I look yeah. at the prom as a film, as an opportunity to continue to give musicals to the world. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud to stand united with them and to be a part of that legacy because we're all prom family now. So let's go back a little bit, if, if, if we may, to North Carolina where you grew up. Um, you talk about how confident Joe Ellen is. So I'm assuming that's basically the same kind of energy I would have gotten if I met you when you were doing Carmen and Fame. It would have been that, that, was that girl, you were on that level. Let's talk about, let's talk about Carmen. How was that? Well, you know, uh... <laughs> 
That was my very first musical. And I probably wasn't very good, but I had a great, uh, I had a great theater teacher, Miss Jones, and she and the the troupe. We had a, a troupe, a theater troupe. They sort of challenged me to just do the thing you're scared of, and you know, I wasn't the world's greatest singer when I first started out. It was pretty bad actually, but I did it. And, and I fell in love with storytelling and it made me want to challenge myself to get better at it and to, uh, to become excellent uh -huh. at this thing. And who you know, doesn't love a challenge? So yeah, Carmen was what sort of started it all. And then after that, I was cast as Aida in an all county production of Aida, which was equally if terrifying, if not more so. That's terrifying. Um, because all I had was Heather Headley's last album being like, oh my God, I can't do this. She's incredible. But I also was like, but there's Heather Headley and she's a beautiful woman of color. So if she can do this, I have to put my best foot forward and I'm gonna try and I'm gonna keep trying until I'm good at it. Um, so that was uh, that was really what solidified it for me. I, I love a challenge. I. I will say I speak dance better than I speak English, um, but theater allowed me to find a way to use my skills as a dancer to enhance my the storytelling. Um, and that seems to be my superpower. It's what I bring to everything, the physicality of it, but also the challenge of being an equally strong singer and actor as as I am a dancer. You know, it's, it's something that I, I work on every day. The work never stops, by the way. And also shout out to, what is it? TC and Co. Dance Complex. That's where it all started, right? That's where the dance yes. started. That girl. Yes. You, you were that little girl busting a move, right? At the yeah. complex. At the complex. <laughs> I will say, I loved my training there because Christy Curtis, she runs TC and Company Dance Complex, um, encouraged me to be versatile. Like I trained in everything. Um, it was not an option to not take ballet. You took ballet and then you took the jazz and the hip hop and the contemporary and the styles that didn't have names. You took it all. So um, I'm very grateful for your time there. I didn't realize that you you had a, a, a great Broadway uh, fairy godmother in Charlotte Dumbois. Um, I do. <laughs> is a Broadway legend, legend <laughs> and Tony nominated star. Um, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about how you met her and what she did for you. So I met the great Charlotte Dumbois um, in a, while I was doing another um, all county production of a chorus line. I'd been cast as Cassie. Now I fondly refer to my version as Blassie. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> but she was conveniently playing Cassie on Broadway in the revival of A Chorus Line. And um, my producers at the time made it possible for me to go to New York to see her in the show and then also work with her. So she taught me the Cassie dance along with um, her assistant, not really her assistant, but anyways, Eric Scotto, who also worked on the show, um, who had directed yeah, me. Uh -huh. So it was like all full, full circle. Anyways, I'm dancing in a room with Charlotte Dubois. And she looks at me and she says, well, you could go on Broadway tonight. So what do you want to do with your life? And I said, oh, I'm thinking about going, I want to go to college da, 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 for musical theater. And she was like, oh, why? Why do you, why do you want to do that? <laughs> She'd, she's going to kill me for telling you this story. Wow. But um, she was like, I think if you want to go to college, you totally can. She's like, but for you, you're, she was like, I think your path is different. And if you wanted to start dancing today, you could. And it, I hadn't really thought about it until, wow. until she said it. So I guess I have Charlotte Dumbois to thank for my journey because she's, she shifted it. She was the shift. Um, she has constantly been a source of support and encouragement. And, you know, if you talk to her, if you were to ask her, she would tell you, yeah, Ari doesn't always make the right decisions, <laughs> but she does make decisions. And, but she, I seek good counsel and my good counsel comes from her quite often. Wow. 
and you did end up going to college, but then you didn't stay. So I'm sure you had Charlotte Dumas in your in your mind. You were like, wait a minute, she she knows this industry, and and you yeah. just kind of jumped in. You you jumped in and slept yeah. on her couch. Was there was there some couch surfing <laughs> involved in this story? Um, I there yeah, sort of. There was a couch surfing moment. I moved to New York. <laughs> I had X amount of dollars in my bank account. So I was, I'd been paying rent to live on a friend's couch. And then that fell through. And I was in a moment where I didn't have a choice. I, I had to call someone, I needed a place to stay. And Charlotte was graciously was like, well, come over, Just come over, we'll figure it out. And she and her husband, Terry Mann were like, why don't you stay, help us take care of the girls. And, uh, and we'll just, see how it goes. So I was sort of like a live in nanny helper outer. <laughs> cool. Cool. I, uh, okay. And, until I booked a job and then I went on tour. They're like my theatrical fairy godmother parents, fairy god parents. That's how you say that. <laughs> you got bring it on, right? Is that what happened? Yeah. You got you got a bunch of jobs at once it sounds like. I did. I did. I booked I was like I really pounded the pavement. I did the thing. I was non-union. I stood in the non ec lines. I went to the auditions my, my agent sent me, but I wasn't seen for everything and I struck out a lot. And then all of a sudden I booked three jobs at once and um, one was a non, non-union tour of A Course Line and then a, I think it was the second national of Wicked and then Andy Blankenbuehler's Bring It On. And I remember talking to Charlotte and Terry about this and I was like, what do I do, you guys? And and Terry was like, well, you know what you need to do. And Charlotte was like, you like creating things, don't you? And so I was like, yeah, I gotta do Bring It On. So that's how that went. And um, and I, it was, it that started a, a love affair for me of creating the work. I don't like really um, replacing, mm-hmm. not my favorite thing to do because I like the details. I like having a say in the life of a character. Um, I like exploring. I like arguing with my directors and my team. I love it. I'm like, let's go. Let's figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I that that was the great lesson that I learned. Uh, I just realized, didn't bring it on start at the same theater as the prom, the Alliance, right? Same the Alliance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and also, you were in um, the Bronx Vale at the Lawmaker where the prom was on Broadway. I, I love all the little connections. Yeah. I love the, you know, Venue yeah. resume connections. I have an important question because this, I feel like, was really important to your journey. You ended up in Bring It On. Um, I remember you in Bring It On, and I was man, that was a fun show, and that choreography was crazy. Um, mm-hmm. But you, so you covered for Adrian Warren, right? You were the understudy for Adrian Warren's leading oh role. Yes. And then you <laughs> ended up in Motown, and you were covering for Valicia Lacay. Uh-huh. who played Diana, Diana. Ross. and you were in Pippin and you also didn't you understudy and then take over for a, for a very brief run the leading for play, right? time, so leading you, play. You, now this is a thing on Broadway people who can do that right I mean this is a thing there are performers yeah. that casting agents and directors know like this person is going to be really great because we'll have them there we can use them when we need them, but sometimes that means that you don't get your own opportunities. And then did Hamilton, which is on Disney Plus, if anyone missed it. She's the bullet. And it's a very important role. You can't have Hamilton without the bullet. Um, you can't. But you, cannot. you were purely in the ensemble in Hamilton, but it seems like you had actually played some of those roles in readings, right? Some of the yeah. featured roles. So you but but you took yeah. you took an you took an ensemble job. Yes. And then it was your last ensemble job, correct? So let's talk about that. And it seems like making that decision was a huge part of, I think, what got you to where you are today. So let's talk about that. I think that's important for people to hear. Yeah, that was a very, it was a hard decision to make, but uh, it was important. It's been very important to my journey. I, um, I love the work, right? So it doesn't really matter to me if it's ensemble work or understudy work or being the feature or the leading lady, I love the work, but I do believe sure. in continually challenging myself. And after a point, I didn't feel mm-hmm. like I was meeting the full possibility of my own potential. I felt like I was sort of 
I'd plateaued a little bit for myself, for my own personal growth. And so uh-huh. maybe halfway through my run in Hamilton and I really st- stuck to my guns on the, I don't want to cover anymore. I don't want to be the on stage understudy. I want to see if I can book as an actor in her in her own right, in her own power and create my own roles. And it was hard. And I'll be honest, I went on record and it got a lot of blowback. But I'm, I said the same types of things that I'm saying to you now is that I just wanted to challenge myself. I just wanted to try for something more because why not? I'm a woman of color. I'm queer. I'm a dancer right. first, but I'm, I'm willing to work hard to be the best I can be. Um, and like I said, I just love making the work. And I think if I'm looking back at it now, I think it was misconstrued that maybe I was saying ensemble work was not important and that was never the intention. Right. Ensemble work is the heartbeat of the show. You don't have a world without the ensemble. But I do think that as as an individual artist, you have to make decisions for yourself. And that's all that I was doing at the time. It's all we have power over individually is yes and no. So I, I said no to something and said yes to something else. Um, and had I not done that, I don't know, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. Um, but I will say to you, that was not easy. It has not gotten easier as I've moved on. It's only gotten harder. <laughs> right, and I, right. think, I think some people look at it and they're like, oh, but you're starring on Broadway and it's gosh, it's so fabulous. I'm like, you're right, it is fabulous. But there are a new set of challenges that come with this type of work. And the ensemble, you're working hard, you're running, you're dancing, you're sweating your butt off. You have to maintain your body and your voice in a different way. You don't necessarily have the challenge of moving the plot forward or necessarily promoting the show in the same way. When you are a leading lady, you do have the responsibility of the plot. If the show does not land, some of that is on you if you, if you didn't show up, right? Um, so it, there's the yeah. different, there's a different set of responsibilities that come with wanting this type of work. It is not all cupcakes and sprinkles. You will have to make huge sacrifices. Um, but to me, this work is worth it, especially with stories like The Prom. Yeah. It's, worth, it's worth everything to be able to tell this story and get it heard. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about that. Very well said uh, and understood. I, I also, I feel good because, you know, I like to think Broadway.com gave you some of your first camera opportunities with those you vlogs. Did. And now she's all over the camera. Now, now <laughs> the cameras are just never never off her. So um, so before I have to let, let you go, we have to obviously talk about West Side Story. Uh, you are in Nita. Uh, yeah. In Steven Spielberg's, I mean, it just sat this many. How many big things can we say in one sentence? West Side Story, <laughs> Anita, Steven Spielberg movie remake. Okay, um, that's a big deal. Have you seen any of it? No, I haven't. I haven't seen anything. It's uh, it's getting hard. It's getting harder to not know what the thing you made looks like. <laughs> um, but I believe in the work, and I do think that. I think that good things are worth waiting for. And I know what it felt like to make that movie. And man, oh man, yeah, if it looks as good as it felt, it's going to be a good movie. I mean, they didn't cut America, right? You get to do the whole thing. The quintet, it's all in there. I mean, what you were seeing West Side Story, you're doing it. I mean, come on. (laughs) (laughs) It's so great. I mean, look, that That is crazy. um, it is crazy. The whole experience was crazy. I can't say enough positive things. I, I have to say, I, I am one of the luckiest people in the world. I got to make West Side Story with Steven Spielberg as an afro Latina. I'm the darkest woman on camera to play this role, um, which is a huge deal in and of itself because historically, Latinas are portrayed on the small screen and the big screen as all being light-skinned with beautiful, like, potentially brown or raven hair, but Latinos look like me, you know? Um, And it's, I've already heard from so many young Latinx people who are just like, thank you. 
we finally see yeah. ourselves and and the movie's not even out but there's a photo of it and if you can see it yeah. then you, you start to believe that you too can do it and i love that part of it and then with the prom you know brian again steven spielberg ryan murphy what is life i they both have very different styles of movie making but uh they're both very collaborative which is a good thing for me because i like collaboration <laughs> A boy like that, you get to do that one too. That's in there. I do, I do. Like none of <laughs> look, all of the that stuff is there. You will get all of her, and honestly, you will get everything you expect from this character and more because Tony Kushner has adapted the script in such a beautiful yeah. way. I think that it addresses the uh, political implications and the socioeconomic implications of the time, I think you'll get to see um, more of what it was really like to live yeah. in a 1957 world. And I think it's really interesting because that's what makes a universal story, right? When you can go back and look at the 1961 film, and then when our film comes out, it's like they're essentially very similar messages. So how, you, then you, you were forced to take stock of how far have we actually come. Um, and I'm curious to see what that answer is because I'm very, very curious. <laughs> I can't wait. So, uh, so, so we have The Prom on Netflix, December yeah. 11th, and then you're filming this new TV show, which doesn't officially have a title or it does, is it? It has a working title, but um, you, our our writer showrunner Cinco Paul did give us the green light to go ahead and call it Schmigadoon. So we are making Schmigadoon for which is fun <laughs> because it's in it's inspired by it's Brigadoonish and every and, and it's like a cast of Broadway favor. So sorry, hopefully, um, and then West Side Story, and I'm sure there's just going to be endless other things. Ariana, I'm so thrilled for you. I'm so excited for everyone to get to see the prom. And uh, thank you for joining me. You look lovely and it was good to catch up. Thank you. So good to see your face, my friend. Thank you for having me.